Hello everybody and welcome back. Good to talk to all of you again today and I do apologize for my recent absence. But before I get to anything else, first this. I um, saw this being posted to Facebook today and uh, it's an email uh, that was sent by someone I believe at the United Hospice of Rockland and they're asking if there's anybody out there um, who is willing and capable of visiting uh, an old veteran who was at the Battle of Guadalcanal. So they're, the person that they're looking for is someone who fought during that campaign. So now the chances of this is very, very, very small. Obviously, most people who were in that campaign are probably in their 90s now. So the chance of this is very, very small. But, you know, the world's a big place, and maybe somebody out there knows somebody. And, you know, in a lot of cases, with a lot of people, you know, the most you can do is maybe share on Facebook and hope somebody else picks it up and shares as well. For me, I've got a little bit more reach, and I'm hoping that maybe some good will come out from me talking about this. So, uh, if anybody out there knows someone who is near this hospice, um, at least in that area, and is willing to go see an old veteran, um, you know, please send them an email or you know get in contact with with them and say that you know somebody that might be willing to help. Anything really, um, you know, just hoping that some good comes out from this because it sounds like that old veteran who's at that hospice really has something that they want to talk about and they've maybe waited a very very long time and they want to find someone that they have some sort of common experience to talk about it with so just throwing it out there and hoping that maybe somebody who watches this video will know someone now, on to the World of Warships news, but before I get there, one other thing. Uh, there is going to be a video coming out probably next two days or so, uh, where I'm going to do a sort of a historical comparison between three of the big seven battleships, the Colorado, Nelson, and Nagato-class battleships. Um, and in that video, uh, you're going to be able to enter uh, in the comment section for a shot at a space camo, a permanent space camo. So do keep an eye open for that video. I am currently in the midst of working on that one. All right, so on to the development blog stuff. So there's some news on the Kronstadt, and I would say it's good news. So remember the last time I did a Kronstadt video and I played it, and I'm like, Jesus, the ship is, oh, there's a lot wrong with it. And I mentioned that, you know, maybe the ship could do with a little bit more HP. Uh, I mentioned that her guns were very unreliable, could use a little bit more in that department and it seems like that they have sort of followed along with those suggestions um, HP has gone up to about 71,000 not as crazy as the initial like 80 plus thousand 71,000 is sort of what I was thinking about um, in fact somebody actually pointed out to me that the new HP total is the like the low HP plus the high HP divided by two so it's just the average between the two <laughs> Sigma value has gone up so 2.05 Sigma that should make her guns a little bit more reliable uh, her shells should go more um, where you want them to rather than just sort of all over the place. And it reloads a little bit faster. So now you're going to be able to get off a bit more shells uh, than before. She's also got the addition of a surveillance radar, the same kind as the Dimitri Donskoy. So that should allow Kronstadt to have a little bit more utility. Um, so all in all, I think th these changes are good. Um, Kronstadt, I think, really needed it. Mm, I'm not so sure about if this is going to be sort of all that she needs i feel like maybe she needs a touch bit more but this is definitely a change in a good direction but not like crazy right this is not going overboard Kronstadt's just going to become a little bit better a little bit more comfortable to play and right now even if she just comes out like this i think she'd be okay stalingrad on the other hand um Stalingrad, oh boy, um, it, it almost feels like Wargaming is just like actively trying to do anything possible to make this ship the most broken ship that you can possibly imagine. That's the feeling I keep getting because it looks like, you know, when you first look at this, you're like, oh, maybe they nerfed her a little bit because they dropped her HP down. And then you look at the rest of it and it's like, nope, the ship got buffed like quite a bit more than her first iteration, which was already really crazy strong so oh boy man um stalingrad just looks like it's gonna be insane and the thing i'm gonna say now is if this ship really comes out to be absolutely like crazy insane i really think a ship like this should not end up in clan wars um because i feel like clans that have access to this ship 
if they run to clans that don't, it, it's just not a fair fight at all. All right, so t let's take a look at what changed for Stalingrad. Yes, she has an HP reduction, but then take a look at this. Her Sigma value has gone up to 2.25. What? Like, Yamato at 2.1 is, like, crazy good. 2.25? Just unbelievable. Her auto-bounce angles are basically the same as the USN ones. So for every other ship except for Minotaur and the USN heavy cruisers, Auto bounce starts at 45 and it ends at you know 100% at 60 degrees. USN it starts at 0% auto bounce at 60 degrees and increases to 100 by 67 and a half. So crazy amount of auto bounce. Um, now they did say that the dispersion ellipse has been increased to being more similar to that of a battleship, but really with 2.25 sigma, like is that really going to make a big difference? I don't think so because that sigma is still going to make most of the shells go towards the center and basically where you aim. So that dispersion ellipse change doesn't seem that big, unless, of course, you know, they come out and, like, the horizontal dispersion is god-awful, maybe? But other than that, I mean, just the sigma alone looks like, you know, the shells are really just going to go where you want them to. Krupp has gone up by 300 points. This means penetration has gone up. And I think penetration has gone up not a little bit, but, like, a nice chunk up. And so now the ship has a lot more penetration as well. She also fires faster as her main gun reload has now decreased to 18.5. Furthermore, her gun angles are better, so she doesn't have to show as much broadside, meaning she can auto-bounce stuff better. <sighs> okay, cool. Yes, Wargaming. We, we get it. We get it. It's Stalingrad. Yes, you know, like there's some sort of mythical Russian connection to that ship that they gotta make it like the best thing in the world. Is Ay. Oh, and don't forget, now it also has radar. I, I don't really have much else to say. Like, I like the Kronstadt changes, because I feel like, oh, you know, Kronstadt has her weaknesses, which I explained in the Kronstadt video, but, you know, th she needed some help. But Stalingrad, from everything that I saw before, and the ship didn't really need that much more help, and now it's like, let's give her some more... just kind of mind-boggling uh, changes for Stalingrad. I don't understand why she needs to be even more powerful than she was originally. Like, just her having 32 millimeter bow for a cruiser was already crazy, you know, and and now she's got, like, a whole bunch of other things as well. Just... Uh, okay. Yeah. I, I, I don't get this one. I, I don't get the changes here. I, ho I hope that this ship is just, for fun, limited to random battles. Okay, moving on. Um... There's a tier 3 Russian cruiser. Okay, we don't care about that, really. Nobody does. Um, moving on, Midway. Okay, so they're going to decrease the number of planes from Midway from 136 to 116. So that's a 20 plane reduction instead of the original reduction down to like 96. Like, what the hell was that? I, I don't understand what they're thinking, but 136 to 116 is, is a nerf to the Midway. A ship which, to my knowledge, right now, without changes... If you look at the statistics for pretty much every server except the Russian server, it's pretty well balanced with Hakuryu. But there is somehow a need to go nerf it by another 20 planes? What? Like, Wargaming, like, come on, you know, like, there's this huge perception that all you guys look at is the Russian server statistics, and literally that seems like what you guys are doing here. So, not only do you then nerf the midway, then you go ahead and you buff the Hakuryu? Really? Like, you're already screwing the midway over by making her have lower tier fighters, lower tier torpedo bombers, and all that, and now you turn straight around and you buff the hooker. What? Where did this idea come from? Like, honest to God, where did this idea come from? Is it... it oh. See, like, there's always this horrible perception that Wargaming only ever looks at the Russian server statistics. But, like, when you see changes like this, you wonder, like, which stats they actually give a crap about. Which ones they look at. Because... Only on the Russian server right now is the Midway, like, significantly better than the Hakuryu. In every other server, it's pretty well balanced. 
obviously usn players just can't have nice things i guess i mean fuck it if a change like this happens i'm selling my midway i'm not even kidding if this change actually goes through and how you has this kind of advantage i'm just gonna outright go sell my midway because you know what that ship is never gonna get properly fixed in its current iteration and maybe one day when they decide to finish up with that cv rework they'll finish it then okay moving on um z39 Okay, so they're going to improve the rear turret angles of the Z39, so it's going to make it a little bit easier to use. Um, and when you're at sort of steep angles, you're going to be able to use that gun. Okay, that's 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 a fair change, right? I mean, that's that's making a destroyer a little bit more comfortable to play, allow their guns to be a little bit more effective. Okay, I, I'm all good with that. But the carrier changes. Oy. It's just mind, mind-boggling. It's the... Like, literally the word I'm going to use there is just absolutely mind-boggling. Don't understand that change at all. Um, don't even understand where it came from. It's just a stupid change there. Okay, um, moving on to the U.S. cruiser changes. Uh, Columbia has got a range increase, so they've given her a bit more base range, which means with the fully upgraded, like, you know, uh, fire control upgrade and everything, her range is going to be a little bit better, probably closer to that, like, 16-kilometer mark that I was thinking initially. Uh, reload time has been decreased, so she's going to be able to spam out HE a little bit faster. There's also going to be one additional change. She's going to have that switch of the module I mentioned last time. Uh, the Sorry, not the module. What am I talking about? Darn it. The consumables. There we go. That's the right word. Because um, I mentioned the last time where I said like the radar and hydro occupy the same slot. It's a bit awkward, right? Um, they're going to shift that consumable over to a different slot. So Cleveland's starting to look a little bit better, although I still question how effective she's going to be at tier 8, but you know, at least like she's looking better. Buffalo had a slight nerf to her surface detectability, which is understandable. Buffalo in her current state is actually already pretty good. Like, surprisingly, really surprisingly, Buffalo, they seem to have nailed like the nail right on its head, and the ship is actually pretty decent, like right now. It's not broken, but it's not like weak. It's actually okay. So, you know, slight nerf there. All right, I'm, I'm good with that for now. Um, Baltimore has been buffed when the Baltimore shifts down to tier 8. They've increased her plating to 27 millimeters. So it'll deal with 155 HE. Um, you know, it'll cost 380 millimeter AP shells to ricochet. Although the 155 HE is kind of a bit of a moot point, honestly, because I think in most cases, any, um, you know, any of those light cruisers with the 152, 155 millimeter HE is going to be running IFHE. So probably not going to help, but hey, at least you can auto bounce 380 armor piercing, which at tier 8 is quite important because you do run into a lot of ship uh, with those kind of shells, so alright. Main battery reload time decreased to 10 seconds, so better. Definitely better. Pensacola. Pensacola is going to get her historically accurate guns back, so the 203mm 55 caliber guns. And, you know, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of Pensacola. Um, she is way too fragile, in my opinion. Um, she was fragile at 7, at 6. It's similar story, but hey, at least she's got firepower, right? At least she's going to have that good firepower. And I think that's going to be at least something that can work in her favor. Um, she could now, I think, really use her guns and her AP to really sort of mess up those lower tier cruisers. So, yeah, okay. I'm all right with that. Um, all in all, the, the American cruiser changes, they're they are okay for now. I would say that for sure. Okay, moving on. Um, like I said, first of all, there's the shift for Columbia's consumable, where they're going to change the surveillance mod to the slot with the spotting aircraft. So now you can have hydroacoustic, defensive AA, and radar. So that's a pretty darn good change, in my opinion. On the other hand, the tier 9 and 10 ships, the Seattle and the... Worcester, Ooh, not good with pronouncing that one. Um, <laughs> remember the whole like box of gimmicks joke that was made a while back about certain ships in World of Warships? Well, the American like cruisers at tier nine and ten definitely have got that now. They've got count it five <laughs> consumables. They have damage control party, hydroacoustic, defensive AA, surveillance radar, and a repair party. It's like gimmick overload right there. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to be with all of these consumables. I mean, you know, somebody who plays these ships are probably going to have or require to have very, very good awareness to know when to use all the sort of the right consumables, like, you know, to get maximum effect out of it. But hey, 
at least it's kind of interesting. I would have to say that to say, you know, like, like at least it's interesting. These ships are looking to like, at least a tier nine and 10 to be kind of a jack of all trades kind of ship that can do a lot of stuff. Um, and it's going to play some demand on the player to make sure that you know how to maximize your consumables to best help the team. So all in all, those upper tier changes, I think they're still good changes. I think it's still going to make those ships interesting to play. But again, you know, a little bit too many, <laughs> too many, right? Like five consumables. Imagine your, your keys. You're gonna need like the, R T Y U N I keys now <laughs> for this. It's like wow, reaching across the keyboard much. Okay, um, and of course one final thing we gotta talk about, and that's the heal for the Prince Eugen and changes to the Abruzzi. Um, first things first, that Italian cruiser. Oh my god, um, what a steaming pile of garbage, <laughs> like, oh my god, I will have to make a, like, a review video when that ship actually gets finalized, and I hope by then she's actually better, but in her current state, holy freaking A, ship is a literal burning garbage pile, it's just awful, um, so hopefully they do some more stuff on her end to make her a little bit better, but like, truth be told, like a repair party, it, it'll help make her a little bit more survivable, but the ship is, her guns are just terrible, like I cannot use the guns on that ship at that tier, right? I mean, the Duca d'Aosta, like similar issues with guns, but you know, hey, you're a tier lower, y you can make do. Once you get running up against like tier nines and stuff, my god. Um, but at least it'll help make you survive a little bit longer because the repair party can now heal like 33% of the citadel damage, so that's good. Um, Prince Oregon change though. Hmm. This change is a, a big change because Prince Oregon is going to get a heal and it's going to be this good heal. And now, for those of you who sort of go, well, what's the point of like, you know, how big of a difference is a heal going to make? Think about it this way when Otago first came out, she had no heal. And. Back then, it was like, wow, the ship is just kind of meh, right, compared to the uh, interior equivalent, which is the Mogami. And then Otago got a heal, and the rest, as we say, is history, because she became a significantly better ship. And I think something similar is going to happen between Prince Eugen and Hipper. Whichever one gets the heal, which in this case is going to be the Prince, is going to be the better ship. The Prince Eugen is going to be the better of the two Thierry German cruisers. So for those of you who have her and, you know, have always been like, yo, the ship is really kind of meh, um, now you're going to have a ship that is going to be better than the Hipper. So that's good, I guess, for the owners of the Prince Eugen or people who want to acquire the ship. Um, not so good for the people who have Hipper who kind of get to look at it and be like, well, the premium ship is better than my uh, tech tree ship. Because um, that does seem to be a trend right now, and that's kind of the direction we're going. So anyways... Um, that is pretty much most of the news, I think, on the development blog. I think there was one other thing about the Massachusetts, but, uh, I mean, the Massachusetts news really wasn't all that substantial yet, because I think they're still working out and figuring out what, which direction they want to go with that ship. So when they sort of have a more firm direction, we will uh, talk about that one. Anyways, folks, um, you know, keep an eye out for the other video and a chance to win a space camo. Safe from all that, folks. Take care. Have yourselves a good one, and I will talk to you uh, really, really soon.